All right, here they go again. Uh, another effort to repeal Obamacare. Uh, but this time, uh, they seem to be thinking among the Republican leadership that they've got the charm here and that this could do it. Now, that's despite the fact that Senator Rand Paul doesn't like it. At least five Republicans are on the fence, and a number of insurers are gathering around to say this ain't our cup of tea. And already a couple of big state governors like uh, New Jersey's Chris Christie and John Kasich of Ohio say uh, it is unacceptable to them. To Republican House Ways and Means Committee member Dave Schweiker joins us on the phone. Uh, Congressman, thank you for taking the time. Uh, we don't know a lot about this, but we know that it isn't a slam dunk. Is it risky then to, to, to go ahead and see your Senate colleagues attempt to put this up for a vote? Look, whenever you're dealing in this subject area, it's risky. Um, but you have to actually sort of deal with the math. And if you're from Arizona, you know, the Obamacare, the ACA, particularly individual market, is collapsing around us. Um, we don't have a choice. We need a fix. And the fact of the matter is if they're really talking about substantial block granting without a lot of the rules and regulations giving us the ability to be creative, um, that's something Arizona is really good at. You know what, if this comes down, it's, it's caused a commotion, I guess, among comedians and all in late night TV, and I don't want to go down that avenue, Congressman, but whether pre-existing conditions are covered. But I guess the gist of this, you know, legislation uh, by Bill Cassidy and Lindsey Graham means more states have more control of more dollars where they could decide what to do with those dollars and if push comes to shove, whether to cover such pre-existing conditions. Um, is that yeah. true? That's not my understanding. It's, it's a little more um, nuanced than that. Okay. I believe the me mechanisms of it being a guaranteed issue remain. What happens is what is part of a individual benefit packet? Could you alter it, change it? Um, but I believe at least in, in a draft that I was touching, this is in politics a lifetime ago because it was a week ago, <laughs> it actually had the language saying, a state could change some of that essential benefit package as long as it was expanding coverage, um, lowering prices. Well, you can't expand coverage and do certain, um, you know, uh, you, you, you have to be able to also find ways that a pre-existing will be covered because you have guaranteed issue. So, but, but, you know, I could look at that as well. I could look at that as well, sir. Language. I could look at that as well and say, well, you can uh, expand coverage, have lower prices if you don't have to worry about covering someone who has a very expensive prior condition or whatever. Um, so that's why some read into this. And I don't know what the truth is. So that's why I'm relying on your expertise here. But that was the concern that a lot of folks have that before they want to put, the, you know, a pen to paper or, or sign on to this. And many of them are eager, uh, particularly Republicans who, who don't want an embarrassment here, uh, that they want assurances that, that states won't pull a fast one on folks like that. Yeah, look, it's fair. But when you actually look at, at, at sort of what goes on in healthcare in the United States, um, for 30 some years, we've had guaranteed service. You walk into an emergency room, you walk into a hospital, they must take care of you. So the number of procedures um, in our society has been basically the same hmm. before the ACA, after the ACA, and in the future. This is a debate on how you pay for it and who gets to pay for it. How do you guys change the narrative here, though? Because I always think Republicans are in a no-win situation, especially when you know, Barack Obama reappears on the public stage to talk about you guys trying to dismantle uh, health care um, and being very, very cruel about it and, and, and uh, that this would lead to a lot of suffering and pain uh, when, in fact, it's these rocketing premiums for a lot of, uh, you know, uh, individual Americans across the country that's causing a great deal of suffering and pain. Uh, so yet in that area, you always seem to be behind the eight ball, losing the PR no, no. argument. How do you I, counter that? I, I'm not sure, because uh, at some point you need adults in the room to make the math work. And as we're seeing in the individual market, and, and, and here's the problem. Most people don't realize Obamacare primarily was about the individual market in a congressional district like I represent. It's only 2 percent of my population are in that individual market hmm. and the expansion of Medicaid. But that individual market is collapsing because the healthy folks aren't buying. The cost has gotten too exorbitant. And those who with chronic conditions are. 
so the toxicity curve blows off the chart. We're trying to find a way to lower the premiums so more of the healthy population will buy. Well, that's sort of an actuarial math discussion, and the other side is talking about emotion. Well, emotion doesn't actually make the, the, you know, the finances work. No, that's a very good point. It doesn't pay the bills either, and there are bills to be addressed here, whether you're a fan of what you guys are doing, a fan of what Democrats want to do, a single payer or whatever. Congressman, thank you for taking the time.